am Laureen and welcome to Your Light. Our beliefs, our behaviors, even the very essence of our being are all built on fundamentals. Our structure, our rhythm, and our strength depend upon them. If the foundation is weak, the entire project is in jeopardy. In short, fundamentals must be solid. So on that note, I humbly ask that you join me in examining two seemingly contrasting fundamentals. See how they stack up, reflect on their impact, and see which one, if any, or both, may be best for you. But first, if you'd like to raise your level of perspective, live a more mindful life, or just like to learn more about spiritual growth, development, and all that kind of good stuff, start now by subscribing and hitting that bell so you don't miss a thing. Now grab your attention and let's go. The year is 1642. The place is St. Paul's Cathedral. London, England. The clergyman is John Don, their dean. The theme of his sermon is, No man is an island. The phrase he uses, No man is an island, expresses the idea that human beings do poorly when isolated from others, and that they need to be part of a community in order to thrive especially considering the state of our world the past couple of years, I'd say that there probably quite a bit of truth to that. The words spoken that day were so well received that their meaning was deeply embedded into Christian teachings from then on. Now, nearly 400 years later, John Donne is regarded as one of the greatest English poets and is also so revered that a statue of him was erected in his honor at the cathedral. Togetherness and unity somehow evokes this warm and fuzzy feeling within us. And teamwork and synergy even tends to heighten our own sense of accomplishment. There's no doubt that human beings are connected to each other in many ways. And yes, that connection is important for our personal well-being and survival. But what degree? Statistics prove that all humans benefit from the support of others, whether it be in the form of speech, touch, or even thought. I mean, who can't help but feel compassion for someone who is in need and who hasn't appreciated a kind word, a hug, or even someone praying for you? Speaking of praying, I'd like to share a touching prayer with you. These are some of the final words spoken by Jesus of Nazareth to his Father in heaven. It is found in the book of John, chapter 17, verses 11 through 23. Now I am leaving the world and leaving them behind and coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your own care, all those you have given me, so that they will be united just as we are, with none missing. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from Satan's power. As you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. I'm not praying for these alone, but also for the future believers who will come to me. And my prayer for all of them is that they will be of one heart and of one mind just as you and I are, Father. That just as you are in me and I am in you, so they will be in us. And the world will believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory you've given me, the glorious unity of being one as we are. I in them and you in me, all being perfected into one so that the world will know you sent me and will understand that you love them as much as you love me. 
indeed we are called into this grand universe together. Even if we are very different, we all contribute to the sea of humanity. All of us have purpose, all of us belong, and all of us are precious beings given life to share on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Martin Luther King Jr.'s words reflect this best. He said, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. This sense of oneness and understanding is worth cultivating. So now that we've made the argument for no man being an island, let's take a look at its opposite. The year is 483 BCE. The place is a small village in northeast India called Beluva. The 80-year-old ailing Buddha is giving his final lesson to some of the monks and nuns there. Be your own island, your own refuge, with no other refuge. Let the teaching be your island and your refuge with no other refuge. You see, most of the suffering that we endure comes from our craving, our anger, our hate, our discrimination, and our delusions. Those afflictions are all a result of looking outward rather than inward. To quote once more from the enlightened one, when one dwells contemplating the body in the body, the feelings in the feelings, the mind in the mind, and doing so earnestly, clearly comprehending and mindfully, after having overcome desire and sorrow in regard to the world, then truly he is an island unto himself, a refuge unto himself, seeking no external refuge. That is when true freedom is possible. The amount of freedom you enjoy can simply be measured by the amount of understanding and compassion that you have developed within your own heart. The greater the understanding and compassion, the greater your freedom will be. And because of that, you are no longer afraid of any suffering. You don't allow yourself to be drowned in the ocean of suffering. You don't allow suffering to overwhelm you because you already know how to transform that suffering within you and around you. You're even capable of smiling at your own sufferings and the suffering around you because that smile proves that you have confidence in your capacity to transform it. That smile is born from your awareness that the suffering is there, but you can do something. You can be something in order to remove the suffering around you every day, every hour. In other words, with understanding and compassion truly within you, you can always help to relieve the suffering around you. The being your own island clearly symbolizes the need for us to be independent of the world around us, knowing that the unseen within us is of far greater wealth and power. But just as an island is never truly alone, neither are we. So this conundrum we find, to be or not to be an island, what do you think? Me, personally, I believe that both have profound relevance 
and must coexist as the paradox that they are. The notion that life itself is this amazing, uninterrupted, complex super system of networks is one that I absolutely adore. And no image illustrates this better than what is seen on the planet Pandora in the Disney movie Avatar. The Navi's sacred tree of souls is the epicenter of their interconnectedness with each other and all of life, past, present, and future. In fact, the entire movie showcases the concept of ultimately accepting being one with all. So if you haven't seen it recently, maybe you should. I do believe that we are all one and that our world, or worlds for that matter, all relate in ways we cannot even begin to explain. Which brings me to the other rudimentary idea which I also love. That is solitude. I've done an entire video on that topic alone and you can watch that here. Time spent on your island, in my opinion, is the only way to examine and develop your own authentic self. It is there where we can truly reflect on who we are, where we come from, where we might be heading, and why we even exist. Without the interruption of the racket of society. It's essential for our own peace and stability as well as for equipping us to be a beneficial part of the whole. So thank you for stopping by Your Light. And as joint life heirs, may we all endeavor to live a peaceful life worthy of our calling. Be humble, gentle, and patient. And until next time, keep loving yourself and others. Namaste.